Hello, this is Dr. Michael Ennis with Ennis Chiropractic. You know, we're an upper cervical specialist, and so we do a lot, obviously, with the neck. And one of the big questions that come up for our patients is, Doc, what's, how do I sleep? What's the best position do I sleep? What kind of pillows should I use? So I kind of want to address some of what we uh, do for our patients. Uh, the first thing is talk about pillows. And like I always tell people, you know, what's the best pillow? And then I ask them, well, what's the best color car? And obviously there isn't one. It's really an individual thing. What's the best pillow for you is not necessarily the best pillow for me, but there are certain uh, guidelines that we like to use. First, if you're a side sleeper, we need to have the gap between your head and your shoulder taken up by the pillow so that when you lay on your side, your head's not like this or it's not like this, but it's actually straight. Also, if the pillow is too small, you will take your shoulder and round it forward to make this distance shorter. And obviously that's not what we want because that's gonna twist at the bottom of the neck. And that's actually a big problem, especially for our patients. So we're looking for a pillow that can maintain its thickness when you lay down, but keep you in a straight line. And so every person's a little bit different, every body's a little different, so you have to experiment with that outside. So pillows that I find that I've been experiment, experimenting with lately are uh, water pillows. So the, the pillow actually has a bladder in it, and then this particular one has a, a memory foam uh, around that. And so, but you can adjust the thickness and how much it will compress at night. And so I'm still kind of experimenting with that right now. And I will definitely update you on what my thoughts are. Initially, I think it's, it's pretty decent. Uh, I would love to have a pillow that I, I sleep on my side primarily that indentates. So instead of being a rectangular, it has an indentation for the shoulder to go in. And I think that if you could do water with that, that might be just the best. But so something like that would be great. On your back, what we wanna see on your back is that your head is not tilted forward um, or it's so, so little that it's like this. We want it to be in a neutral position. So for most people that sleep on their back, it's a very, very, very thin pillow. Um, in fact, on my back, when I sleep on my back, I don't use a pillow at all. Or I have a travel, uh, those U-shaped travel pillows. It's made of memory foam. It's, when you compress it, it's actually quite small. So that when I put it around my neck, it just takes up just the space basically. And I lay back over it and the, the other U parts come up here so I can't turn my head too much. And uh, that works really great, especially when you travel, you can use it that way for your, your bed pillow. It's actually pretty great. Um, for the back sleepers. And then Dr. Ennis, well, I sleep on my back and my side, what do I do? Well, what I do is I have two pillows. On my side, I sleep with one. And then if I shift to my back and I'm conscious enough, I'll switch to the other or I'll use no pillow. So that's my strategy. You'll have to train yourself on what you wanna do, but a side pillow will not work very well for somebody that's on their back, unless you can take the side pillow, the back pillow, excuse me, and fold it to make it thick enough for here. Some people do that, and that's great. That's a good strategy as well. But those strategies, you gotta have a strategy because otherwise, you'll probably turn over on your stomach and your head's turned, and that's gonna be terrible for our necks. Okay, uh, oh, last thing where I see people kind of fudging a little bit. Dr. Ennis, I don't sleep on my stomach at all, but their pelvis is twisted twist it over, in which case you are sleeping practically in your stomach, you just don't realize it because when the twist down here, it's gonna twist up here. And so we wanna make sure that you're not doing that. And, and the strategy for that is to have a pillow between your knees. If your knees are lined up, your back is flat. And so that's really our, our strategy for that. If you have a hard time keeping the pillow between your knees, say you wake up and the pillow's gone and you're all twisted in a weird position, then we recommend a body pillow, but not just a regular body pillow. Those collapse, they're not that useful. But a pregnancy body pillow is much thicker and stronger. Those are great. You'll hug it, it'll actually keep your spine lined up even if your legs forward and tossed over it. It's actually really a good strategy for a lot of people that are stomach sleepers and we're trying to get you off of the stomach sleeping. That's, that's what we usually recommend for that. Um, one of the other questions I get often is, okay, so, what about beds? What's the best bed? And again, just like I told you with pillows, it is individual. Uh, what I like for beds though, are adjustability. Uh, when you get a bed, for example, that is too soft, so it may feel just like a cloud in the showroom, but after three or four months, it's got no support. Uh, I don't like those. Uh, those don't last that long. 
and they're not good on the back in my opinion. Um, if you're shopping for a bed, the rule of thumb is get the firmest mattress you can possibly get and then you can always soften it by putting the proper topper on it. And those toppers aren't that expensive and you can change them out and you can personalize it to you. Um, you can even personalize it to um, your, your mate, for example, if they like something softer or harder, you can get um, toppers that are not a king size, but say like a split. So you can one size harder, one size softer. So those are some good strategies. Um, I like the sleep number beds as well. Uh, I like them because you can actually change how hard or soft it is. And so, and you can do it with a press of a button. And I find that to be very handy. So if I work out and I need something a little softer, then I can do it. And if I'm doing, if I'm doing something else and I want it, I want it harder, like on my back, for example, then I can make it harder. And so I really love that adjustability about those. So sleeping is really important. Uh, I, I worked for a, in a clinic in California just three decades ago. And it was a very prominent doctor, and he used to tell people, you know, it's at night when all the workers come out when you're sleeping and try to repair all the damage you do throughout the day. And I think that's a really good way of, of kind of putting it. The rest is such an important part of the healing process. And for you to be a normal human being, you probably find sometimes that if you don't get rest, you may not be yourself. And so we want to make sure that we're concentrating on that, and that's part, a big part of the healing process and a big part of what we talk about with our patients. Again, this is Dr. Michael Ennis. I hope some of that was helpful. Uh, we appreciate you very much. Have a wonderful, healthy day.